Hi, Jill from Fired Glass here and today we are talking metal moulds, mainly because I've just had a delivery in the studio so I'm very very excited to be uh, prepping some new moulds for some new pieces. So, um, these have come in from Paul Gardner, he can be found on Glass Fusing UK on Facebook uh, group um, and he and his son have an Etsy shop which is called Slumping Mould and uh, you can find lots of different uh, metal moulds on there, really useful. So we'll put a link in the description below and uh, have a look, I'm sure you'll, you'll find something that you like. So this is uh, my brand spanking new mould, it's a bit shiny so um, we need to make sure that we prep this well before we actually start slumping with it. So obviously having just been made it's probably got dust and oil on it when it comes in so you need to clean these so i've just cleaned this one with a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol um, so it's just a, a neutral spirit that allows me to get all the dust and oil off that um, so i am ready to go with that one but before i do that let's just talk about some of the ones that i've already been using so i just put this to one side as you can see with this one, this um, is probably familiar if you've made tea lights before. We put a piece on top and it slumps down over it. Um, you can obviously see from the top here that this is how I handle this mould because um, it's all nice and uh, clean on the top where the coatings come off. Um, so this one, I probably wouldn't slump again on this. I need to recoat this. So that's, we're going to recoat this today. So people ask quite often, um, when do you know, how do you know it needs recoating? I'd say when it looks like this, and um, when you've got digs and scratches all over it, you need to recoat this one. So this is what we're going to do with this. And then this, this is a little, um, we probably use these for Christmas decorations. Mostly I use mine for Christmas decorations where you put the piece on here, and it slumps over the back like that and then when you've finished it stands up like this so um, very useful for that and as you can see this has already been coated um, so we're good to go with that uh, it's all finished it's all dried we can slump straight on to that so that's what we're looking at today how to do that so I'm going back to this piece here I'm going to talk about what we coat this thing with. Now, I've seen a few discussions lately about um, some people don't bother. They just fire straight on that. I've never tried that myself, um, so maybe that's an experiment for me. And another thing I've never tried is actually using kiln wash um, on these. My understanding was that that wasn't going to work, but um, I've never given it a go. Some people have said that it's worked for them. Um, at the moment, what I use is Zip. Um, it's boron nitride spray, um, it's uh, often known as Zip, and it comes in a bottle like this. So you notice I've got gloves on here. I've got a new bottle um, as well, which has just arrived. This one's nearly empty. And if you listen, there you go. Probably just heard that. There we are. It's got a marble in the bottom of it and you, you heard it took quite a while for that marble to become unstuck from the sediment. So what you need to do if you get a new bottle of this is really, really, really give it a good shake until you can hear that marble um, come away from the sediment because you want that you don't want a sediment um, of the chemical in the bottom. You want it suspended in the solution. So it comes with a spray attachment and obviously you unscrew the top you put your sprayer in and you can use it as a spray now I used to do that first of all when I when I first got this I used to um, use a spray this one um, is nearly empty just gonna make sure sediments away from the bottom there we go and you can see what it looks like there's a white liquid on there it's not a pleasant liquid which is why i'm using the gloves ideally you would put a mask on um, when you're dealing with this um, to sort of you know better safe than sorry really 
I'm not going to take too long to do this. This brush, um, I use this brush uh, solely for putting on boron nitride onto my um, moulds. Now I said that I used to use the spray. If you use a spray and if you decide to, to carry on using the spray going forward, you must use a mask because you don't want to inhale any of the um, sort of overspray from this. I then switched to using um, a brush um, for this. I'm going to turn this so you can probably see the best way for it. Um, and it's made absolutely no difference to the finished piece, but it's made a huge difference to how much of this product I use. So I used to probably get, I don't know, six or seven moulds coated by spraying them from an entire bottle and it's very expensive. Um, and now what I find is that I can coat my entire collection probably six or seven times over before I need more. And you'll see how much I've got here. Not very much at all. This is just an old yoghurt pot. Me and my yoghurt pots. If you've seen any of the other videos, there's usually a yoghurt pot featuring in it somehow. You can see all I'm doing here is trying to get this reasonably even on here just to get that coating. And that, that didn't coat too badly. Sometimes it's like rain on uh, a window pane, so it all clumps together and, and trickles down. But this has actually gone on quite well. And I'm just probably going to leave that to one side to dry before I put another um, coating on that. You can see it's beginning to dry a little bit, so I'll move this just over here so you can see on the edges. You could go, like you do with a, a kiln shelf, you could go top to bottom and then back over it again. I'll just do that to show you. Just to make sure that you don't get these um, ridges forming on here. But once it dries a little more, I'll just go over it once more. This I find useful as well. This is uh, the paper that comes wrapped around the glass um, from warm glass. So I just uh, repurpose that and it's great for actually just uh, sitting your moulds on and uh, coating them with. Okay, so that's a new mould that we cleaned and we've now coated. So we can leave that to one side and wait for that to dry. So I'm just going to put this over here. And we're going to look at this one. So the question that we get here with this, let's have a quick look at it. It's, it's got a few digs and scratches all the way around. Um, is should I clean that off? I have to say I've never cleaned it off because um, what you find is that the coating is a powder. It, it goes to a powder once it fires um, and it tends to get picked up with the wet version that you're going to put on and mixes with it and it's absolutely fine. And you'll find as it mixes it all becomes smooth again. Okay, let's twist this round. These can be tricky little blighters to do unless you're doing a really deep slump with a, a big piece but I have absolutely never had any of my tea lights stick once I've used these it's probably quite interesting to know what you favor um, so don't forget the, the comments below be useful to know whether or not you've tried um, kiln wash whether you've tried slumping without anything at all on here and had success with that. Maybe we'll have a look at doing um, some experiments in a future video with some kiln wash and see how that worked. So it's done the sides, I'm just going to do the top and you see it's really quick to do. You will find when you fire um, you'll get a little powdery residue on your piece, um, particularly with um, tea lights because they obviously cling to the side of that. Um, I just use vinegar and water and it all comes off. Absolutely fine. There we go. Done. I think that's 
check that bit. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay. Happy with that and uh, I'll leave that to dry and we'll we'll put another coat on that um, and just make sure we smoothed out um, any areas perhaps like these bits that are on top you can see they're smoothing out nicely now and we're good to go so boron nitrides what I used you can see um, I've just done two moulds and we've pretty much got quite um, you know quite a bit left so we could probably depending on the size of your mold um, do another few molds out of that um, but yeah if you've got any questions or any comments um, leave them below um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like or our video <laughs> um, and tell us what you think and see you soon